Hello there. Welcome to my channel. So today I am ready with the summary of chapter 2, Invisible Man. Uh, before we proceed further, let me tell you that uh, in chapter number 1 we read that how a strange man he comes to Aipeng village, which is a village, a small village uh, situated in West Sussex, England. And this person, he comes all the way from London because he is invisible. All these details we would be reading as uh, the chapters are going to, I mean, the story is going to proceed further. He is invisible that no one knows. It is only the readers who would be slowly and slowly making out that uh, he wears an uh, overcoat and then the collar of his shirt are turned with a hat and then uh, a servant or a napkin all the time covering his face. Only his pink nose is visible. So the very first impression of any person would be that maybe he's feeling cold. But the thing which uh, is uh, something, uh, you know, which uh, gives birth to suspicion is that that even though when the man is indoors, then also he's all covered up. So, in chapter number 2, the title is uh, Mr. Terry Henry's First Impression. Terry Henry is a clock jobber. In the previous chapter, we just learnt a uh, few things about Iping Village. And we met Mrs. Hall, the owner of Coach and Horses, and Millie, her domestic help. Even though Mrs. Hall uh, feels that this man, you know, his appearance, there is something wrong with his appearance and uh, maybe he is uh, too much covered up. But then also she could not summon up courage to ask him that whether he has met with an accident. Now students, uh, 4 o'clock time is something which seems quite important to Mr. H.G. Wells because all the significant things happen at 4 o'clock. So chapter number 2 starts with Again, the same time, 4 o'clock, when uh, Mr. Teddy Henry, the clock jobber, comes to coach and horses. The clock of the parlor needed repair and he has come, obviously, to repair it. Mrs. Hall, she uh, goes to the room of the stranger to seek his permission that uh, could she allow the clock jobber to come and repair the clock of the parlor. As she moves inside, as she goes uh, inside his room, the man is dozing. And uh, as Mrs. Hall uh, looks around, she sees that the light in the room was quite uh, dim and the man was dozing. And as he was dozing, Mrs. Hall gets some time to pay, you know, she gets some time to have a closer look to his face. And she is kind of stunned as she feels that the man had a very strange kind of appearance. Maybe his mouth was too big and something wrong, enormous mouth, an incredible mouth, as if uh, it swallowed the whole portion, lower portion of his face. And she is unable to understand that what was wrong with his appearance, but uh, that comes to, that surely comes to her mind, that uh, he is strange, his appearance is strange. The man uh, gets up and uh, Mrs. Hall uh, Definitely, she's a little bit uh, reluctant to ask him about uh, the thing that uh, should she allow Henry to come and repair the parlor clock. So, uh, before she could say anything, before he could actually allow her to send Teddy, he has certain things to tell Mrs. Hall. That is, uh, he is an experimental investigator. You know, he explains to her that uh, in the last chapter he was talking about his luggage because that contains his baggage contains his apparatus and appliances and as he's an experimental investigator he would be needing all this for his work and another thing he explains to mrs hall is that uh, he shouldn't be disturbed he says his work the nature of his work is so difficult that many of the times his eyes pain and he feels weak and he fe he has pain in his eyes so he prefers locking himself in his room he doesn't like uh, many people to come to his room and even the slightest disturbance he does not want to have so mrs hall says certainly that she would be careful that he wouldn't be disturbed in future and uh, 
definitely she would be thinking that what kind of work is it that as he has told her experimental investigator uh after thinking uh, discussing all this with uh, the stranger teddy henfrey is allowed to enter his room the parlor clock needed to be repaired teddy notices that the man was strange his appearance was definitely something different and uh, the light in the room even though it's dim but he could find out that there is something wrong he is too much covered up and so many things come to his mind and finally as he decides to have start a conversation with him the invisible man is not even ready for that so uh, teddy is not very pleased with this man as he thinks that he's ugly and one more thing is there that the only thing which comes to his mind that why is he all covered up maybe he's uh, hiding from someone so teddy quickly repairs the clock and reaches the gleason's corner the market place where he could find mr hall mrs hall's husband and he narrates and the entire thing to him that a rum looking customer had stopped in coach and horses and he explains to him that women are not very good in judging people so probably mrs hall had given this place to a wrong person and you must go out and find go and find about the whereabouts this man we learn that uh, mr hall is a taxi driver he quickly runs over to coach and horses to collect the details of the man but unfortunately by the time he reaches the man is already asleep he is unable to meet him and when he talks to his wife about the man so she just listens to everything and after that she dismisses the entire matter by saying you mind your own business because as i told you in chapter number 1 that she is quite a money minded lady she doesn't want to waste you know her time and all these these things and obviously it would be a great loss of her money now one thing should be understood by you that the stranger the guest the strange looking man he had come to iping with high hopes and he thought iping is a small village people here would not be disturbing him he would be easily able to set up his laboratory where he would be able to reverse the experiment or in other words where he would be able to develop the formula wherein he could be visible again he has many problems with his invisibility which are not discussed in chapter number 1 or chapter number 2 all that would be discussed later on when we would be collecting details about his life but we will find slowly and slowly we will find this is that is impression about the people about the villagers of iping it was completely wrong these people are quite interfering sort and that is something very very common with the villagers that if any outsider comes to the village they are really keen and curious to notice what all he or she is doing and with this man his appearance definitely is such that people are uh attracted and they have all sort of things in their mind so with this we end chapter number 2 see you in the next video bye bye